Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn about antenna violations. What are these antenna violations? How do they occur? And how do you resolve them? So without any further delay, let's get started. So antenna effect occurs during manufacturing process. To be specific, during etching. Etching is what? Etching means removing the unwanted materials of the surface. So for etching, we use a certain process which is known as dry etching, also called as plasma etching. So during plasma etching, metals or poly have the tendency to accumulate certain charges. And these charges do not get any other part to discharge other than gate. So they discharge through gate and in turn damage the gate oxide. So this effect is called an antenna effect. Now you must be thinking what is this plasma etching and why is this effect called an antenna effect. So I'm going to try to answer these questions now. Now there are two kinds of etching, wet etching and dry etching. Dry etching is also known as plasma etching. In case of wet etching, we use chemicals to etch the materials of the surface, whereas in plasma etching, we use stable gases. Now, antenna violations occur during plasma etching and not during wet etching. But still, we go for plasma etching only and not for wet etching. Basically, wet etching was used when plasma etching was not invented at all. But since plasma etching is in invented, we go for plasma etching only because of certain reasons and we are going to see those reasons now. So wet etching is isotropic in nature. It means that it is going to etch equally in both the directions, vertically as well as horizontally. For example, if you uh, put the chemical from here, this chemical is going to react with this material and it is going to etch this material off irrespective of the direction. For example, if this chemical goes here uh, on the side walls, it is going to react, the, react with the side wall as well and it is going to etch that off as well. But we do not want that. We just want to etch this material off. But still, this is isotropic in nature. It is not going to care and it is going to etch in both the directions. And the result will be something like this. So we wanted to etch just this material off, but we got this undercut as well. So this is the major drawback of wet etching. But plasma etching is anisotropic in nature. It means that it is going to etch only in one direction. So only in vertical direction. So we will have a very clean etching, this kind of etching. So that is why we go for plasma etching. So I'll tell you briefly how exactly this happens. So plasma is neutral in charge. It has ions and electrons. Positively charged carriers in plasma is our ions and negatively charged carriers are electrons. And they both are equal in number. So that is why plasma is neutral in nature. So this kind of etching happens in a chamber which contains two electrodes. Now, a stable gas will be fed into plasma and that stable gas is going to react with electrons and will give, and byproduct will be a reactive species. And that reactive species is going to react with this material and etch, the, etch this off. But it is not going to etch on the side walls because the ions will be bombarded from here and they are going to make just this material reactive enough to, so that it can react with that reactive species. So it is only going to make just this vertical space reactive enough. That is why only this uh, only etching will happen only vertically and not horizontally. So that is why we say that we can achieve a very good anisotropy in plasma etching. So plasma etching is a completely different topic in itself and you might not understand it fully in this video. If you want to know more about plasma etching, you can research about it. But for now, just know that during plasma etching, the metal or poly which is exposed in plasma will accumulate certain charges and once it reaches certain potential, it is going to get discharged through gate and 
in turn it is going to damage the gate oxide now why is it called an antenna effect because large poly area or metal which is exposed in plasma is acting as an antenna to collect the charge that is why it is called an antenna effect now i'll discuss a one small point which i have mentioned here that is selectivity now wet etching has one good thing that is it has good selectivity so what does this mean it means that it knows which material to etch it means it selects which material it has to etch for example if you pour the chemical from here and if this is etching this material as soon as it encounters another material that is this it is going to stop the etching because chemical is going to react only with a certain material it's not that chemical is not meant to react with every kind of material right so that is why wet etching has good selectivity but plasma etching doesn't have that good selectivity but we can improve the selectivity of dry etching as well by adding certain inhibitors so this was the point one point which i just wanted to mention so let's move forward so now let's see when do we know that we have antenna violation so in your rule deck something called max antenna ratio is defined and if your exposed conductor area by gate oxide area is greater than that antenna ratio it means you have an antenna violation it makes sense right if more conductor area is exposed to plasma it means it is going to accumulate more charge and if it is going to accumulate more charge more charge is going to discharge through gate oxide and more damage will occur similarly if gate oxide area is less it means it is going the charge is going to damage the gate oxide area more so now let's see once we have antenna violations how do we resolve them so in this video we are going to discuss the most two common ways to resolve antenna violations the first one is metal jumper and second one is diode insertion basically adding reverse by a diode near the gate so let's see so as you can see we have an nmos here this is the gate of nmos this is gate oxide and it is connected to some metals this is metal 1 this is 2 and metal 3 as you can see here metal 3 is quite long it means antenna violation is going to occur in this metal now this is not a complete circuit complete circuit it's something like this this input is connected to this output now see this metal 3 is connected to this metal 4 5 and the again 4 3 2 1 i have defined which color is which metal and also these are the directions this is vertical this is horizontal also i have not used wires here because it is understandable that obviously wires will be there so anyway let's move forward so during fabrication lower metal layers are going to be fabricated first and then higher and then higher so i'll show you how it will look till metal 3 is fabricated so till metal 3 is fabricated it will look something like that now you can clearly see that metal 3 is long enough to accumulate enough number of charges to cause antenna violation i'll show how antenna violation will occur so as you can see enough number of charges have been accumulated in this metal 3 but there is no part to discharge other than the gate see that the path to diffusion is not yet formed because metal four layer is not yet fabricated so that is why the charges are going to discharge through gate and in turn it is going to damage the gate oxide and that is why antenna will antenna violation will occur in this metal so what is the solution of this the solution is metal jumper in higher metal layer what we are going to do we are going to break this metal near the gate and we are going to add a jumper in higher metal layer here so what we have done is we have broken this metal 3 and we added metal 4 metal 3 again then 4 and then 3 so now while fabrication it will look something like this but since metal 4 is not yet formed the long wire is not connected to gate anymore and therefore it is not going to damage the gate oxide anymore and there will be no antenna violation occur and once metal 3 is completely fabricated there will not be any charge over this metal and it will be safe 
So now you know, right? Why we only use higher metal layers and low, not lower metal layers. Let's say we use uh, metal two instead of metal four to make this jumper. So now what will happen? Since uh, violation is in metal three, uh, if we use metal jumper in metal two, it will all it will already be fabricated, and this long wire will still have a path to discharge through gate, and it can still damage the gate oxide. So it won't prevent antenna. So that is why we go for higher metal layers because the only point is that it won't be fabricated till then. So that is why in this manner it is going to help antenna and lower metal layers are not going to help. Now let's see another method of resolving antenna violations which is diode insertion. In this method what we can do is we can add a reverse bias diode near the gate. Now what this reverse bias diode will do is so when this metal 3 collects a lots of collects lots of charges that is when it reaches a certain potential and if that certain potential is equal to breakdown potential of this reverse bias diode or greater than that what it what what will happen is all the charges will discharge through reverse bias diode into the ground and in this way it is not going to reach the gate and it will protect the gate oxide in this way antenna violation will be resolved now you must be thinking why are we using only reverse bias diodes and not forward bias diodes so to answer your question let's see what will happen if we use forward bias diodes instead of reverse bias diodes so we know right that reverse bias diodes conduct at very high potential whereas forward bias diodes needs very less potential to conduct so this forward bias diode is going to hamper your normal operation of the circuit because normally our designs work at much lesser voltage let's say from 0 to 5 volts so let's say you're supplying 0 to 5 volts and your forward bias diodes will start conducting at what only 0.7 volts so if you're applying 0 to 5 volts and your forward bias start conducting at 0.7 volts so what will happen your current will start will start flowing from your diode and it will go to the ground instead of instead of going to the gate so it will your current will not reach the gate at all so this is the reason because of which we go for reverse bias diodes to resolve antenna and not forward biased so this is it from my side guys let me know in the comment section below if you like the video also if you feel that there are any mistakes let me know in the comment section below that as well and also do not forget to like share and subscribe thanks for watching